Okay, let, let's, uh, I like starting off because you've done a lot of teaching in your own right. You've been teaching for years and you studied with some wonderful teachers as well. And you were mentioning that, and you mentioned what you called, because you were using your non-rebound pad, you were talking about the dead stroke. Dead stick. A dead stick. And so you mentioned that you heard that from, go ahead, go ahead and wax poetic for a moment. No, I mean, I remember Jim Blackley using that term dead stick, and, and I heard Freddie Luber also mention that. And I think it refers to when a drumstick, say for instance, like if you're doing a wrist turn, you have to come down. The stick, I mean, you're, you're, I don't know, I have to be careful in the way that I'm articulating my thoughts right now, because this, th there's, there's a gentle toss upwards and then gravity's allowing that stick to, to collapse. You know? Whereas, I, I, I think it was a difference between, say, for instance, letting a stick rebound like this, where it's alive, versus playing a stroke where it doesn't rebound. Well, again, I hadn't heard that term, so I, I kind of dig this, you know. I, is the well is is deep and hopefully i'll hear of things that i've never heard of forever right but uh okay so yeah uh, okay I, well i mean I, I i don't want to talk about jim blackley or freddie gruber because i haven't heard them talk, use that term and i don't know how they were using that term within what context exactly <laughs> but <clears throat> but what you just said was that the stick is alive or dead. See, we 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 stop down, but the stick is alive. It is. And and but we're stopping down, right? And and so you see, and 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 and, and I think we can take advantage. That's why I was. I think we can take advantage of of you know the free stroke. Yeah. I. I I think there are probably different ways. That's not this technique. That's not the Spivak technique. But I, I can imagine. Uh, in fact, for years, I'm sure I, I played not really stopping down. So, you know, until you develop the, the understanding of this particular approach, uh, it's 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 something that uh, it's hard to really talk about because you don't have an alternative uh, reference point. Yeah. Uh, but but it would seem to me that because I, I'm trying to remember. I, I, yeah, Roy Burns talked about. I think he called these pickups. I studied yeah. with. Him for, he called them. I think he called them pickups. Yeah. There others call it the free stroke. Now, do you have to? For you, this is a distinction I want to discuss with you. For you, the idea of letting the stick bounce up meant suddenly the stick was free or alive. Yeah. Right. But what, why why can't the stick be alive and and we hold on to it? See, that's where the three finger. To, just stay with me. To, I you probably understand this, but I'm going to just say it. Yeah. To to, to cement this concept in, and and so that's part of this game, right? This allows the stick to be alive. Come on, have some tea with me. Yeah, yeah, right. And uh, no, just comfortable. Just it's, uh, you know, I, I don't have a teacup currently. Uh, interestingly, I, I drink my tea in a mug. It's too small, you know. But throughout the years, I've had fine china. And I, I need to go get a teacup for educational purposes. Yeah. Really, because when you drink tea, and I can't. I can't introduce you to the, you know, the, the Queen of England because you haven't learned to properly hold the teacup. And, you know, right. So, uh, but, but we're, we're not choking the stick. This, this grip uh, doesn't choke the stick. 
It's part of the gig, this technique. So it is alive, and it doesn't mean we have to let go of it. Now, maybe if you're holding the stick and choking it, you need to let it go to get it to bounce. But I just wanted to, I wanted to make that distinction, right? Just because you're not stopping down doesn't mean the stick isn't alive. Yes. If we hold it with this grip. But that's where this technique gets interesting. That's why the that's why the uh, non-bounce pad is so cool, because it forces us to get in touch with the wrist turn. It forces us to turn our wrist. Bouncing the stick off the surface isn't this technique's wrist turn. This technique's wrist turn does this. Up, down, up, down, it's up to come down. Over and over and over and over. It's up to come down, right? And, and without knowing it, we often use the force. Even though we think we're turning our wrists, we're not, because we're really allowing the surface to help us get the stick up. But we want the wrist to bring the stick up, not the force of the surface. OK, so with that said, I know we've been working on singles in different ways. Last week, we got you to really raise, learn how to make bigger throws. Well, let's see how all of that's working. But right now, just based on what we're talking about, let's just take the chart that involves slowly speeding singles up. Remember, it goes from four to five to six. Give me one second. Seven. Okay. Uh oh, I'm I'm all alone here. I'm gonna have to uh, uh, pull out my acting chops, I guess. No. Hello to all you fine people. Stan, pro drums, thank you. Just took care of my my broken <laughs> uh, broken double pedal. That place is legendary. And they took care of it for me. Thank you to Sergei Kasimov, a wonderful pianist, played with Buddy Rich, who lives near there and was a real gentleman and dropped the pedal off for me. And he already knew Stan at Pro Drums, mm -hmm. Stan Jerry. And uh, so he went down to Pro Drums and hung out. Apparently, there's always somebody there, you know, that's really well known. Jim Keltner or yeah. Charlie Watts was there. Last time I was there, apparently there was some actor, well-known actor, drummer there. <laughs> These actors are also musicians, right? Yeah. OK, so. All right, so. Uh, what, what we're doing is turning our wrists, trying not to cheat and, and, uh, and have the surface help to get us but we have to turn the wrist up to come down. And so let's put it, just put it on at 40. Okay, start at 40. Let's see how it looks. So what is it that, what is it that you exactly want me to play? Remember the chart? We go to four, then groups to five. So it's two, if you're playing uh, 16th notes, you're, it's two wrist turns for every click. Yeah. And when you go to groups of five, one, two, three, four, five, then one, six, two, then it's three in each hand. Eight, and, and when you nine, go to six, I think you know this chart. I've done this. If you get hung, you can stop and make repairs. So we're starting off with the 16s. Right. I wrote the whole chart out for you. Interesting. I went through my my Dick Wilson, no, went through Dick Wilson charts, and, and he's written that chart out as well. You know, maybe you'll take it more seriously if you see it in Dick's hand. Yeah. Why don't you send that one to me? I'd love to. I'd love to see that. I, I, I'll, I'll continue to include that Dick Wilson stuff. Thanks. Yeah, that'd be nice. You could, yeah, you could just take a picture of it and send that to me. Maybe like. Okay, so. So, now let's just wait, wait, wait before you start to play. Your hands don't look that good. I just, I got my sticks on the surface. 
And I just took out this strip. I'm very flat. See, that looks better. And your left looks better than your right. Your left looks like this, and your right kind of looks but the left looks more like this, and your right looks like this. See how they look different? They, they look different under here, too, don't they? they see, they, the ears look different. See, your left, it's exactly what I just said. You're, you're copying. Look, you're in your right, the, the ring finger and the, well, don't change it. But look in, in your left, the, the fourth and the fifth are off. Now, they're very different. So how can they, how, how, how is it that they're going to feel the same in the hand, or even sound the same? See, if you're, if you're fourth finger, you might say it's not touching. But if your fourth finger is on that stick, it's going to change the sound of the stick a little bit. So see how far away your, your fifth is in your left? Look at the monitor. Can you copy? Make the right like the left. Uh, kind of a little more off, more three things. There you go. Let's go with that because that looks better. Okay. It's flat. You got the big Murray Spivak hands. You know he's in traditional grip and he raises, and they're up here. He's got these giant hands. You know. Okay, that looks really good. Now just maintain that. We're we're really focused. We really want to focus on this moment. Well, essentially all the time. And and within the context of this, you have fulcrum potential. I think that's Martinez. I don't know if Dick Wilson called it fulcrum potential. Fulcrum potential. Okay. So even though we're turning our wrist and we're not we're not allowing this we're not ask, asking us ourselves to play rebounds and have the stick rocking over over a fulcrum. Right? What we're doing is maintaining this three finger grip that allows the stick to breathe and it's also providing us what is a very potentially narrow fulcrum okay. because as Murray Spivak would say have you ever seen a teeter-totter with a big wide fulcrum that's always a very small fulcrum make any sense well, you couldn't rock if the Falcons do. Not efficient. Okay, so go ahead and play. Now look, and, and, and very simply, a wrist turn is just this. That's all it is. With this grip. That's it. Okay. You, you can think of it in different ways. I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll, I'll just tip you to, before we get started, this might help as well. If, if you look at the articles that I had the honor of co-authoring with Richard Martinez, he's we're, we're talking about the the lever system, right? So this is what is this a third class lever with the fulcrum at one end, force in the middle, and resistance at the other end, right? Like a wheelbarrow, uh, uh, like a like a, like a tweezers. The tweezers is a third class lever. Okay, so the muscles here in front of the elbow move the wrist. And muscles can only pull, they can't push. So these muscles are going to, that are attached, are going to lift. See, there's a fulcrum here. And then we can use gravity or the muscles underneath in front of the elbow can motivate or pull downward. So you have a lever arm or you have a third class lever, I should say. All the class levers include a lever arm. And you have a fulcrum, you have force and resistance. It's all there. Maintain that grip and go ahead and play. Decide on a height of turn. You don't have to turn. Let's not turn too high. This thing's going to get going. And as it gets going, the tendency is to start to use the bounce on the surface, which is what we don't want. And to prove to ourselves that we're not relying on the bounce, I think it's bring up. We're, we're not going to turn too high. 
The right's already kind of lost its grip. Gone back. Stop playing and just lift your hands up. Don't, 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 don't change them. Ah, uh, you guys think you changed your right just a little. See the left, the, see how the left is a little different? Baby fingers a little further away. So look, the very tip of your fourth. Quite frankly, if yeah, for you, maybe you need to do that. But really, it's the pad of the fourth. It's the crack of the middle finger, the pad of the fourth, and the tip of the fifth. Can you put the pad of your fourth on in the left? Keep it flat. Don't clinch it like this. It's flat, real flat. That doesn't mean that your middle finger slides down the stick. Your middle finger was perfect. Okay, so just keep going, keep going. Really, the tip of the tip of the the fifth can crack of the middle finger, pad of the ring finger, tip of the fifth, and it'll look kind of like that. And if we want, we could move them away, and it wouldn't change the three finger grip. Yeah, that looks better. That's good. Now, decide on a height. Both need to be the same height, too. Your right's typically higher than your left. So because you're a right-handed player, you're on the drums. And that right tends to lead. This nice, easy turn. Three finger grip. Okay, go to five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So now you're turning the right, it's always higher. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. Now it's to six. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, the one hand is playing. Each hand is playing three notes. Right? One, two, three, four, one, now it's four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. See, yeah, I got higher. You, you're higher. Let them all down here. Relax your arms, just let them hang. Really feel it in here. Go ahead and count four. This speed. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Go ahead and count. Don't turn higher. Two. Can, can you count out loud? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, four. Get to see four. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. One, two, three. Interesting, it's challenging. Don't play it louder just because you're counting it. Four, one, two, three, four, one. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Play louder. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, it's sorry, eight. My, my bad. Now you're in. One, two, three, four, one, four, one. Okay. Yeah. Just watch. Let's see, I'm just lifting mine up and letting it fall. I kind of sit her here. I don't want to see this. See, it's kind of the same, but it's not the same. You can really feel the bump of potential. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. Go to five. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. Three, four, five, one. Turning higher. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. Cut out that hog. I feel like there's more downward force than lifting up. 
come down more gently. Think gravity. Let's think gravity. Just lift it up. Turn, turn a little less high. Yeah, let's get better. There, nice and relaxed. Relax your arms. It's this that we want to see. You're losing it in the, the right. It's gone. If I were to stop you right now, you'd look like... Don't stop. Don't stop. But if I were to stop you, you'd look like this in the right. Not, not like this. I can tell because you're, you've gone into this and you're in your right. It's getting, getting back to where it was, but you went to this. So you, you, when you watch the video back, you'll see you lost your position. You, you have to maintain this and just turn your wrist. It's so damn simple. But maintaining this, if you've been playing other ways for 30, 25, 30 years, so better, isn't it? A little more, they look a little more, oh, starting, to, starting to lose it. Keep the fourth and fifth. Be, be aware of what your fourth and fifth are doing. Yeah. Okay, so you're playing, you're playing five. Nine, nine, so it keeps going back and forth. Now you're higher, but you have your grip back, so stay low and count. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, two three, four, five, one, two, 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 three, four, five, one,
A little half turned over, your favorite. There it is. There it is. See, it feels different, doesn't it? Now, we play half turned over, but that's not what this is right now. Learn this. When you're going to half turned over, it'll be different than even what you're doing now. So just learn the difference. That was good. Really good. That's how slow that is. Keep that grip. Three, four, five, six, one, two. There you go. Now I have the other hand. Don't change it. Don't go into half turned over. It, it, this, not this. Oh, you're losing it right now. You're losing just now. Okay, now go to set. Go to seven. Keeping that in mind. Good. I'll do it. Your notes up. Your both both hands look like this now. Not up and center. You don't do this. Just a little faster. Why would you change anything? Just turn faster. Turn faster. Don't do this. A sign. Whatever. Take this. now go to seven and one one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, don't lose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 one, two, three, Go back to your position. Take your other fingers off. You do it this way? Yeah, there. Is it really a three finger grip? Can you take your other fingers off? Not bad, though. Can you take your other fingers off? Just as an experiment? Yeah. Can you do that with three fingers? Has to be off. Has to be off. To the right. Pull the fork off. Pull it off. Pull it off. Go on, take it off. There it is. That's all you get. That's all. No, oh, that's all you get. I know it feels strange. Come on, take it off. Yeah. There you go. Feel it right in the air. Nice and flat. And you stop going into this, crunching back fingers. Now, even if you're not touching with the back fingers, so that you feel as though you really have it, you changed your position. So now suddenly a wrist turn at one speed looks this way, and then at another speed looks this way. So you're turning this way or you're turning this way. No, it's a wrist turn. It's just a wrist turn with a three finger grip. Period. Very good. Okay, so you're you're at a, you're at you're at forty. We'll have you. Yeah. Practice with just a, practice taking the fourth off for fun. Challenge yourself. Is it really in the three finger grip? Okay. So so and uh, can I stay low and not? Bang. Look, I see now I'm still one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. No, it's just one, two, three, four, five, three, one, two, three, four, five, three, one, two, three, four, five, three, one, two, three, four. And it was a little hard for you to go one, two, three, four, five, do, do, okay, go, go. You're not a fan of rush? Just to turn off your metronome. That was good. Good job. Right? Don't play for a sec, but you found it hard, which is interesting to me. This is why getting on the keyboard, working on writing. See, I hear a tune. One, two, three, pop on, two, three, pop one, two, three, four, one. 
it's Rush. One, two, three, da bong. So how would you play that if you were playing that tune? Would you have to go one, two, three, one, two, and you couldn't really hear all the numbers in your head? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. It's going back and forth and it becomes music, right? Which you got, okay? Right. And there's a tune. Isn't that a, yeah, isn't that a yes tune too? Doom, 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 de doom, 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 de doom. From I know to whatever that was, not every day. I think it changes or one of those songs. Yeah, right, right. Okay, so you'd be challenged playing that tune. And now you're not so challenged because you need to be able to count that. You need to be able to go one, two, three, four, one, two, th and put an action anywhere within that context. Okay. Now let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at the uh, glam accent number two. That at the beginning, at least you da 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 count with it, not making accents. So you really internalize the pulse. Okay, so you have flam accent number two. Okay. Now what's interesting is I, as I go through my uh, Richard Wilson lessons, it's like Richard Wilson didn't give me the typical stroke order. Maybe that's because I came in more advanced with having studied with Wally and Murray. Hmm. Not sure. But there is a method to this madness or to this genius. Right? <coughs> so but it's cool because the flam accent comes in a particular place differently. And it's it's uh, Martinez points out that his uh his orders, order of strokes or chronology of strokes is a little different than the Spivak library, right? So every student is, 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 is unique, as Marie said, that's why he doesn't write a book, because you need to actually be with the student to deal with their personal situation, their approach to plan. But uh, this, the flam accent number two, so Marie, so Richard didn't give me well, I'm accent number two for some time. Interesting. And gave me strokes that are later on, like Burger 25. Early. Mm -hmm. Not quite sure what that is. All right. So, without a metronome, just go ahead and play this. Let me take a look at it. Nope, there's your grip. Stop. It's kind of even your left. Your left, the first thing is kind of pointed, and your back fingers are tucked in, and you're and you're looking like that. It's your plus sign. You no, know, it's not. It's it looks more like like this, right? With that shadow along the lines that follow the uh, second knuckle of each finger. It's all lined up, and the stick follows the, that in the hand. And you get a certain alignment like that. So every time you pick up the sticks and you do this. Look how different that looks. Look how this looks different 
than this. Okay. Much better. That you really need every time you take stick to pad, see, and then it'll go up flat, you can turn, it's all there. It's actually incredibly simple. But if you abrogate these fundamental principles, it won't seem simple. You'll never get it. Thinking, oh, it's not that important. So what if my wrist is like that? Then it be, it, the simplicity is gone. Okay. All right, so go ahead and play this. No metronome with that rip. You're losing your grit. Notice you lost your. Don't play. Just keep it there. Just keep it. Don't change it. Stop and don't change your grip. Stop and don't change your grip. Don't change it. Just stop. Stay there. Look in the monitor. Your left looks pretty good, doesn't it? Your your right has a different shape. If you were to hold up the sticks to the to the monitor, and you don't even need to, because I already know what they look like. They can't be the same in here. It will not. They will not look the same. Ah, uh, you get it. You're getting it back. Well, you've already changed. You don't have to show me after you changed it. You no. fix. You're fixing it. Did you see? Okay, now go back to your. It's almost like a. You don't want to have like a gimp hand. You know, right? That ends up in the shape. There's a condition that involves. This happening actually, and, and the wrist loses the strength in the hand. So, but we want this, right? We don't want to turn into this. Like the, suddenly the hand shrunk and is shriveled up, and no longer functioning properly. It's this. I, I, I know it. I'm just trying to get it into your mind and into your thinking, your soul, like that. Look how nice that looks. There, you can't lose that just because you're doing, all you're doing is two notes and then you're making a motion. So show me what two little wrist turns looks like. We just did it. We just played the wrist turn. No, just in the right. Tap, tap. Remember? Remember I showed you it's just this with this grip. That's all it is. Nothing's going to change. So show me what two little, don't change your grip. Don't start doing this. Two little wrist turns, a couple inches high, just in the right. The grip we want to maintain and the little turn. It's even okay. And then show me what a throw on the right would look like. Okay, so that's in the better direction, right? Okay, now in the left, show me what two. Don't lose your grip in the right. It's getting smaller and smaller. Do so you want to control this thing? But you have to let it go to control it. There. And then a throw in the left. How does that work? Your left is better than your right. Interesting. For now. Okay. So just go ahead and play this with no, no metronome again. See if you can maintain the grip in the right. Otherwise, we're just treading water. Remember, your propensity, and you're doing it right now, is to make the, the, the appoggiatura louder than the note before, which is very strange to me. A pagetura is supposed to be really quiet. If anything, the, the little turn would be louder. Really, they're the same, okay? No, but your, your first note, right there, is small. Right there. You don't see that. Put your, uh, put your left on your calf. Put your left on your okay, You lost your grip. You've gone right back into this thing. It's this. No, when you go up, it doesn't look like this. No, it doesn't look like that. See, it, when you go up, it doesn't look like this. When you, like that, it doesn't look like that. I don't think. I think it looks more like this. Watch, see, I'm, I'm, I've got that three finger grip. A regular wrist turn, a regular wrist turn looks like this. Okay, it's like this. Regular wrist turn, and then, and then when I go up, it looks like this. It doesn't look like this. It looks like, it just looks like a flat wrist. It, it almost looks like I didn't go up. I'm just down here like this. I went up and it kind of maintains 
that shape. It's just this shape up here somewhere. I got there by doing that. Which you've done today already. Yeah, it doesn't twist your fingers don't come in. They they release. They release. Okay. We'll talk about that in a minute, but that's better. Now turn your wrist. Okay, now. Now. The two little notes. Show me two notes. Two little turns. Is that how you want to turn? That's fine. Now do that and then on after the second turn, give me a downstroke in the left. No. And now you're going to make a downstroke in the left uh, as a flam. No, it's going to be a flam though. It's going to be a turn in the right, and the next turn will be the appoggiatura for a uh, left flam. Right again. Tap, flam. Tap, flam. Okay, the two rights have to be the same height. If that was better. Now your now your appoggiatura is slower. Right. It's just two turns the same height. Like that. Feel the timing is a little different than what you were doing. For you, a flam was raising that right for the big appoggiatura. It's a tiny little note. Yeah. Right. You don't create a flam by making it louder by turning the other hand higher. That is the appoggiatura. It's just a little tiny thickening, thickening of the note. Like that. Now do that the other way. Try to maintain that open grip. Stop closing in on the stick in the back. There you go. Just keep telling yourself that. Now, so now you're thinking of two things. You know, look how high those little. No, how high are you going to turn? This side, like that. That's what you did. No, nope. second note was like, look, you're coming all the way up almost three or four inches. There it is. A little turn and another little turn. You have to time that. Don't turn it higher. It's the timing of the downstroke in relationship. There you go. Now go the other way. Go the other way a couple times. Get those the same. You keep doing that. I should make that an exercise for you. Don't keep, don't make the second turn. It's supposed to be a tiny appoggiatura bigger. Now go the other way. Now go the other way. Tap. Real time. No, you lifted it up higher. You determine. There it is. So you can do it with concentration. Now go back and forth and maintain that. Thinking about the flatness of the grip and the little turns. Not a bigger, yeah, bigger turn, you did it. Two little turns on the left now. <laughs> little turns, little, little, little. Oh, no, you lifted it up. Flam, you gotta go clonk. A flam is just tiny in the right. In the, in the left. Tiny in the right, tiny in the ah, a little big, big. Tiny, 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 too big. The left, tiny, tiny, huge. You turn four inches in the air, right here. Why, why are you turning so high? For your second, there. Concentrate only on that now. This note here, too high. Little, little, little. You could turn from parallel. You don't even need to turn to the ceiling at all. You could turn from parallel. From parallel. No, I'm not saying an upstroke. Just don't turn to the ceiling. Just turn from parallel. You could. Oh, okay, stop. Show me a, we're not going to do this, but remedial. Just give me two little wrist turns on the left. From, okay. Just show me what. You're at the floor, I hope. And imagine you're at the floor. You're at, you're at the floor. You're at the floor. Right. Look how nice and flat. You see your grip looks great right now. You just lose it when you start to play. Sometimes, especially in the right. Okay, so the left, the left can do this, right? Look, I'm not even turning to the ceiling. I'm just turning down. I'm just turning down. See, I'm not turning up at all. To the ceiling that I just turn down. Yeah. Now, now do two of those, and the second one is going to be a flam, a right flam. You don't turn up. Ah, uh, now you're trapped. Now what are you going to do? See, it's that. There you go. That's actually a flam. Oh, you turn to the ceiling a little. Oh, get to turn to the ceiling. 
Oh, there you go. Maybe that'd be a good exercise. Now, if you want to turn just that much to the ceiling, you can, but it has to be just that much every time. Almost like you're playing from parallel. There you go. Now do it go the other way. Ah, oh, don't make that second one. There, there it is. It's like you go to ways and it lifts the other hand up. Nope, did it again. Raising your right makes your left turn high. Right? Here you're gonna do it. Ah, oh, a little better. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, so put the metronome on. Put the metronome on. We had it at 40. Metronome on at 40. Well, let's put this thing into practice. <laughs> so this is the stuff so far. No, I don't like your grip. You got this thing going. Three finger grip. There you go. That looks more natural. Like it's just laying in the hand. Not like you're trying to. You lost it already in the right. See? See how you lost your grip in the right? Not your left. Your left is nice and big. Pull your fourth and fifth away in the in the right. Yeah, there you go. And yeah, it forces you to go flat, doesn't it? Much better. No, come on, pull them away. Pull them away for now. No, you don't go up like this in the right. Left's doing great. Pull your fourth and fifth away in the right. Yep, just keep doing it. So there you go. Now it's correct. Now, now it's correct. It feels it's a little insecure, huh? I know, it's scary. Ah, I've got his three fingers. I get it. And that's why when you go to play a loud gig on the drums, I don't care what you do. But for this, there, you see it's flattening out. Keep the fourth and fifth off on the right. Just keep that fourth and no, keep it off, 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 off. You're going, you've gone back into this. You so you're going up like this. No, take them away a little. You had it for a minute. There it is. There it is. Now you're going up flat. Keep them there. Keep no. Don't choke them in and go up half turned over. There it is. You still want to make the second note for the plan on the left bigger. Ah, oh, there you go. Now, can you give me a bigger downstroke? It's a flat accent, but Murray hasn't indicated accents, but give me a big downstroke. Oh, your left hangs real flat on the way up, but not your right. You lost it in the right. You're, you're doing really great for a minute. Your left is, is kicking rear end. Come on, get the fourth and fifth off in the right. That's better. Big throw in the right with the fourth and fifth off. Big throw. I know it's scary. You can go on up with three fingers. You can go on up with three fingers. You can do it. God, no, you're twisting again. Come on. I, how can I speed the metronome up if you won't do that? No. Nope. Fourth, fifth off in the right. I'm going to just keep it. There it is. Keep them there. Keep them there. You got it. Keep them there. Keep them there. Keep them there. You're holding a bigger ball. You don't get to hold a little ball. It's a big ball. It's a soft ball. It could say it feels like you're holding a ball, maybe. Come on. You're holding a bigger ball in the right. You don't get to hold a little ball. We're holding. Here you're holding a mark. <laughs> so it's too easy. Come on, fourth and fifth off. You had it. You had it, fourth and fifth off. Keep them off in the right. And it's, it's starting to happen. Okay. Now move the metronome up to 60. Good, man. Ah, now when you set up here, when you get your setup, the phrase you brought in from someone else, right? It has to look like that, not like this. Good. That's your new setup. Okay? Really important. Go ahead and play it now. Let's see what, what's happening. It'll change at different speeds. Watch your fourth and fifth in the right. They meet, they're gone back. They're they're back. They're back. You know, I, in your last video, I actually showed you. I don't know if you, how closely you watched it, but you're at, you are doing this. It's subtle. Yeah, I know. You don't even know. You, you can look and do it. I showed it to you in the video. Yeah. I, I gave you a timestamp. So you're, you're back to that. The right really wants to pull. Take them off. You don't get to. All you do is you get to hold on with your first finger, thumb, and middle finger. Like that. There it is. There it is. 
There, and look, your, your left is making two notes that are the same height. Look at that. It's getting better. Yeah, it's better. It's, it's, it's your right, man. Fourth and fifth off fixes it for you. So should those two, the two rights or two lefts, which are not flat. Should they just be turned from parallel? Well, that's where about where I'm about. I'm, 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 no, no. If, if you're going to make a little turn, I was just trying to help you learn that you didn't need to turn so high for a flam. Okay, you're losing it in the right. They look different again. Take the fourth and fifth off in the right. Come on, more, more, more in the right. More in the right. Get out of half turned over. Pulling with the back fingers. Come on, even a little more. Take them away just a little more. Consciously in the right. You've done it all day. Come on, get them off. Come on, more. Can you get them off more? There, there they are. Come on, more, more, more. Fucking just, sorry. Just take them off. Get them away. There. Keep them there. Just keep them there for a minute. Really up front now. Come on, keep them there. Flat. Okay, now, so at this speed. Okay, hold on just a sec now. Good. That fixes it for you. It's much better. It'll, it'll, things will work out much better if you just keep practicing that. And, and, and be really be very disciplined with regards to paying attention to that. Before you play, though, before you play, what? hold on. Hold on one sec. I'm trying to figure this out because this, this stroke will change as it gets faster, right? So it's uh, uh, uh. See how relaxed that can look? So I'm going, now I'm playing in the stroke. Up, up, up. And you'll notice that it's half the effort twice the speed. Because I'm only turning Turn in the right. Turn, turn, turn. Well, and then I'm playing the first wrist. Maybe there's two turns. Turn, turn, but the up is this. Turn, 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 turn. Eventually, this will become a rebound. Turn, 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 turn. just getting a note for free. Note, 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 note. Oh, let it rebound there. Note, 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 note. Turn, to one turn here, one turn there. One smooth, so it's just, you're just doing this. You're getting, you're hearing three notes with one motion. That's the single stroke. That's the brilliance of it, right? Okay, so now we're going to turn the second note into an up. And we're making, nope, I don't like your grip in the right. You're never going to get it that way. You're never going to get the rebound if you're, if you're doing this. You, you can never get an up. Okay, now I'm going to give you something else. You told me you like, you wanted more Dick Wilson. You ready for, for, for uh, more Richard Wilson? Well, showing it to you will mean nothing because I wrote it. Because Dick Wilson would go into the other room to do know who who knows what. Well, he probably know what he was doing. He's, he's, he's preparing to, to talk to the animals, most likely, or be on the phone yakking with his metronome going click, click. It was one of those old friends with a light. Click, click, click. Click, click. And I would 
open up his red, famous red notebook and start copying. Because that was the book he used coming probably from Murray. That was his guideline with regards to how to teach. It's really cool. And and we don't, I don't have the book. I don't only have the first couple pages. I know who has the book, but they won't they won't give it up. They're not doing anything with it. It's just sitting in a dark cabinet somewhere. So whoever has that, please, that a decency to all things art, share the red book. And so here's what Dick said. And I talked to him about it. As the forearm starts down, the tip of the stick reaches its peak, maximum height in brackets. The forward bend of the wrist, besides releasing the finger pressure, also motivates the upward motion of the forearm. I said to, to Richard Wilson, why did you, because he would always start with going up, right? You go up. And he says, but you're starting with the down. I said, well, it's all part of the same thing. They're, you know, they're both. It's one side or the other side. And eventually it's all one thing. The single stroke. It's one single thing. So we, we can start here, we can start there, but it's just, just this thing. And so that'll really help you if you can if you can get that into your head because that's it. So Dick Dick, I guess, got himself up, you know, he's trying to figure out how to how to talk about this stuff, right? Because a lot of guys, you know, there are kids that do this stuff. There's some amazing drummers out there. They have no idea what they're doing. It's natural, you know. And so he, so 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 he's up here, right? And so yeah, the, the forward forearm starts down as the tip of the stick reaches its peak, right? So we've got yeah. So he starts here. Now he says the forward bend of the wrist. Besides releasing the finger pressure, also motivates the upward motion of the form. Well, there it is. Okay. And if you look in my hand, you would see you 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 would see. It's tiny, isn't it? See, I'm actually releasing. Uh, almost kind of moving around the stick in this in, in it with this remedial uh, example for demonstration. Okay. And then as the tip of the stick reaches as, as the what do you say? As the forearm starts down, the tip of the stick reaches its maximum line. As the fourth system, it all happens so fast. But if you don't have all of it, you'll and you're never going to get it with that grip that I keep teaching you. So this will lend itself to you learning about how important not doing this is, because if you're playing like this, you I don't know how you're going to feel. You're not going to feel a release. How are you going to let this this release? How's that ever going to release? But I'll tell you what can release this little grip that we have where we can make the wrist turn because it's all based on this thing that we started off with. I showed you, which you have with this grip not clenched in, so that when we want to go up, it'll go up. But watch, can't move around the stick anymore. Try that. Take, paste your, glue your stick down. Okay, now go to your old. So remnants of your plus sign grip, go to that thing. And I know you think you're not really touching the stick with your back. Go on and turn them in, bring them in, even if they're not touching or let them touch, whatever you, but give me that half turned over thing that I keep not telling you I don't like. 
No, no, go to what's wrong. Play wrong on purpose. Yeah, yeah, come on. You know, you like to go up like this. You go up like this. There's no release at all. And there's it's a twist and a pull. Right, like that. Now, now glue the stick down with your other hand. And 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 go up and try to move around the stick. So yeah, you see, you can't. The butt end went up. Good. Exactly. That's not what we want. Now, keep the stick glued. Give me that comfortable, no big deal. Keep it glued. Three finger grip. Get the other fingers away so that they're not going to bump into the stick as I go to do this. Right. Now just roll around the stick, around the three fingers. Three fingers. Yeah, right there. These fingers, you don't need them much. You want to feel this. You can take them off. Take them off. You don't need them. You know, come take them off. Yeah, pull them off. Tie them away. Okay, come on flat. Come on flat. No, just come flat. Relax. Get them off. Come on, take that. Take. Take your ring finger away. Lift. No, lift your ring finger up. I'm gonna. I, I've seen you do this. I. I know you can lift it to the ceiling. Keep it curved and lift it to the ceiling. Yeah. No, not the middle finger. The fourth finger. Keep it curved and lift it up. Keep fooling with it. You really feel it. There's some kind of tendon that runs here. Come on, get it off and lift it up. Try, try. There you go. There you go. Okay, keep it there. No, oh, come on, keep it off. Now we're just gonna go take all your fingers off. <laughs> I know I'm sounding kind of angry now. All right, ah, 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 sorry. Take all your fingers off. Come on. Take them off. Come on, take them off. There you go. There. See, you did that last week just fine. Perfect. Keep your thumb flat. Keep your thumb flat. Doesn't mean point your tip of the. Yeah, keep it flat. You can take your fingers off and keep it. Glue your stick down. Keep your fingers off. Glue your stick down with the other hand. Fingers off again. Come on, get them off. Lift them up a little more. Open them up. Spread them apart a little. There you go. There, there you go. Now, just do this. There. Okay. It's like there's a little screw running through your the nail of your thumb into the first knuckle of your first finger. Feel it? Come on, keep that thumb flat. It doesn't go to the tip. As you go up, it doesn't go to the tip. It stays flat. It's flat. It's Look, it's flat. Take all your fingers off. Put the flat of your thumb on and just move it around, feeling the flat of that thumb. It, it doesn't suddenly go to the tip. There you go. Now put the first finger on and do that. Now keep your other fingers off. There you go. See like that? Close up. You can go all the way up to here. Keep it kind of flat. Keep that flat thumb on there. That's all you got. Nothing else is holding the stick right now. You only have that. Okay, now now come back down. Now put the middle finger on. Why'd you take your first finger? No. Go back to your first finger and feel this again. Come on, feel this. Here, keep your other fingers away. You don't need them. We're not using them. Just do okay, now put your middle finger on and don't don't change any. Don't change your first finger. It's going to feel like this, only now there's another finger. And it's going to have to open up from the wrist to accommodate that. Don't get your ring finger involved. Keep it away. You don't need it. It's not part of it. You don't need it. Keep it away for a sec. I don't know why you, you can do this, but you can't do this. You can do this, but you can't do this. It will draw them in a tiny bit. Come on, do this again. No, you did it before. You lifted them up and you took them off. The only thing on the stick is the first finger and thumb. And I'm, I'm patient. It's, it's totally cool. I know. I want all your fingers off. I can wait. Come on. There. 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 You got it. Come on. Don't. They came back together. I don't. You have to. You actually physically have to hold them off a little. No. No. Bend the first knuckle of your first finger a little. Not the back, other finger, not the other finger's not going to change. But the, you don't want to be doing this with your first finger. Doesn't mean we point the first finger. We have to maintain this grip. There you go. You got it. Now, see how the fourth and fifth feel? Including the middle finger. I want you to just now, keeping these fingers as much like that as possible, just watch. Watch me. I'm just, I'm keeping the grip here. I'm just bringing in the middle finger. Keep the other fingers away. 
Come on, just the middle finger, bring it in, just tuck it underneath. Not too much, too much, and it's gonna, it just, tuck, just yeah, there it is, there it is. Keep it down here, flat, put it flat. Put it on the surface, it's good. Put it on the surface, put the other hand there. Okay, keeping the ring finger away, a little bent like it was here. I'm just gonna move like this. Come on, keep keep this off. Keep this off. I know you want to bring it in and, and you won't be able to do that anymore. Once you grab with it, you can't go up. I want you to leave it off. It's got to be tiny little fulcrum. It's got to be tiny so you can move around. If you put the other finger on, now it's a big. No, you've got a big fulcrum like this. I want a little fulcrum, not a big fulcrum. No, you take it off. For remedial purposes. You you already did it. I know you can do it. Take all the fingers off again. Like that. No? Like this. Curve them. If you're going to play the piano. Spread them apart a little. There. Keeping the fourth and fifth where they are. Do not allow the ring, the ring finger, the fourth, to come in. Just bring your middle finger in a little bit. Tiny bit. Tiny bit. Okay, better. Okay. Now just lay the stick on the surface. Now move around it without move it, letting the stick move at all. Here you go. Keep that ring finger off. Keep it away. No, you, you're beautiful right now. Come back down. Feel the wrist turning. Feel the wrist turn. That's a wrist turn. Turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it around the stick. Come on, keep that fourth off. Keep that fourth off. Fulcrum's getting wider and wider. Keep it off. Come now come back down with change, but okay. It's no longer up in the air. You had it up in the air. I mean I can just we can just move on if 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 this is too if it hurts or if it's just too hard for you to remember to keep it off or you know it or it's it's just just do this again and lift them all up. It should be an exercise. It doesn't mean they're straight. You can lift them up curved. Uh, I could literally play, I could play a triad on a piano. If I, had, if I brought my piano over here and put it here, I could hold the stick and go da 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 da! Don't come on, you you know. Put your hand. Just, just do this for a while. Come on. Well, let's just hang up for a second. No, I got my hand. I'm gonna play on my hand. Your fingers aren't over your hand. You're gonna have to change your position. There you go. There. Look, look at you. Come on. How come the baby finger goes up so much? They're all the same piano keys. No, baby finger's only gonna move as much as your middle finger moved. Uh, your your uh, middle finger comes up what quarter of an inch then your fourth comes up a quarter inch and your baby finger comes up an inch why does your baby finger come up so much no a little but just play with your baby finger for a minute tap 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 no no play with your baby finger now play turn that high with your fourth on your hand no why is your baby finger keep your baby finger on your hand like you're playing the piano and just move the baby finger all the fingers are on the piano while you're holding here. Good. Now just the baby finger. The other two fingers are on there. Just the baby finger. No, it goes up and down. You're moving a key. It doesn't do this. It's not waving. It's moving a key. That's to say curved. No, it comes up more like this. Look, look. It comes up like this. No, it's more curved. Look how curved mine is. Curve it. Curve it. A little better now the now the uh, now the uh, ring finger no you got to keep your baby finger on the piano now just the ring finger no the, all the fingers except for the ring finger have to stay on the keys yeah, it's kind of hard for me to lift yeah, i know i know i know no you're getting it go on just the just the uh, ring finger just it's hardly going to move look 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 just a tiny bit. 
That's the finger that. Uh, that. Uh, I'm having a hard time moving it. Can you do it at all? You lift it up at all. A little. There bit. it is. There it is. There it is. That's the finger that. Uh, um, I'm having a mental. Uh, Schumann, Schumann uh, ruined his fingers by trying to strengthen that finger by creating a pulley above the piano. OK, now the middle finger, just a little. There it is. Now the ring finger that can only move. Side. No, no, that's your baby finger. No, come on, the other finger. No, the ring finger, ring finger. That's the fourth. It's the hardest one. Yeah, even. There you go. Now the baby finger. Here. If they can play the piano. So, okay, you might want to rap. You should get on the piano, perhaps. Okay, now, so we've got this thing, right? We've got this thing that can play. And, and we can put this one on, and we can play the piano just with these two. Okay, the fourth is tough, I, I, especially if you're holding on, especially if you're holding on with the middle finger. It'll move even less. Yes, look, your hands are beautiful. You should practice that. Your hand looks really musicianly. Now just wrap. Left is even better, huh? So what we're going to do is we're just going to go around the stick. Put the stick on the surface. You don't need to hold it. Yeah, you got the idea. You can go around it without holding it. No, don't go up. I just want you to go around the stick. Keep that fourth and fifth relaxed and away. Now come back down. Come on, come back down. Don't move the stick. See, I'm teaching you to let a grip that can move around the stick, around a little fulcrum. There you go. Come on, keep going. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. There you go. You got it. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Try that. Up. No, do the, do the up, leaving it flat. It'll be a little weird. Just for remedial. Nope. You're already doing this, so you're not going to be able to. You're not going to be able to do this. So it's some other technique. It'll never work. No, nope. stay with me. Up, down, up, down. Just do this. Down. Yeah, right now you see your hand looks normal now. See, because the fourth and fifth have to kind of be off the stick and moving with the hand. And now you've got your big hand. Come on, this goes up. Doesn't go. It just goes straight up and down. No few, right? Stick can't move. The stick can't. If you want need to hold it, you can. But learn to do it not holding. Look, it's just not moving. It's just laying there. Come on, come on, all the way up, all the way up, all the way down, up, down, 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 up. Don't push the button down. You got it. Down. Come on, keep moving around it. Up, down, up, down. Come on, move around the stick. Down, up, down, up. Don't move the stick. Don't move the stick. You're twisting. There it is. It forces you to move in a certain way. That's what I'm trying to teach you. Now, when you're ready, come on, keep it flat. Keep doing that. You don't have to feel this. You need to move around the stick. To feel your fourth and fifth back away from the stick, not doing this, or it won't work. No, going back into your half turned over clutch. It's got to do this. Come on. And down. Up. Down. That's it. You got it. Up. Down. Now this time when you go down, lift the tip up. No, you have to keep it flat. Then you lift it up. Now lift it up. Whoa! Do it again. Go on up around the stick. Now lift it up and fro. <laughs> Different, isn't it? Look how little, you, look how fat your grip looks. Now come on, you gotta turn your wrist and fro. Now throw, which means all you have to do is lift your. It's gonna work no matter what. No, you don't have to. No, you. I just. You just can't do it. You did it once. It's just. It's just this. It feels like this. Only you're gonna lift the stick up, and it'll come right back to where it was. It's gonna come back down to here. At, watch. It'll come back down to there. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a note. It's gonna be tiny now. That release isn't gonna be this big. It's going to be tiny. Tiny. You clutch with your back fingers. We'll just move on. Can you do it? Tiny. So now the butt end has gone. 
I feel it kind of feels like it moved around it, but I but it's gone up a little. Feel it. Move around it and just make a note. No, but but just touch as you move around it. Went up too much. Watch. Look, it's barely gonna move. Look how little. No, look how little. I only get to here now. Did you really move around the stick? Okay. Now you're going to follow that up. The Dick Wilson, when the stick reaches its maximum height, that's right, come on. Come on. And as as the forearm, I'll write this out for you. As the forearm starts down, or I'll take a photocopy. When the, when the forearm starts down, the, pit, the tip of the stick reaches its peak. We're following Dick Wilson. So you're going to get a little release. Take a little note with a little release and up. A little release. And up. A little release. So it look like no, it looks like this. The first part of it'll just look like that. No. It doesn't look like this. I told you it's this. And it does that. No, almost. So you're gonna feel a little of that. It's, oh, it's gonna feel just do, now lay the stick on the surface. Get your other fingers away. It'll, it'll ruin it, it won't work. So I keep working on that with you. Now just go up that much. Go around, no, just go around the stick that much, that much. There, feel that? Come back down. That was your wrist turn. Turn your wrist that much around the stick. That's it. See? It hasn't got all weird. It looks normal. Now get back down to parallel. Come back down. Take the stick and keep it parallel. Now. Come on, take the bead, pull the bead off the surface now. Come on, keep it a half inch away. Half inch. Beautiful. Now remember what you just felt, how little this moved. You're going to feel that when you touch. I think you moved around the stick. Come back down. Come back down with your wrist. Turn your wrist back. You turn your wrist by turning like this. Turn, come back down. Not with the bead on the surface. Keep the bead off now. That was remedial, and you should practice that. Come on, stay close to the surface, though. Because remember, all you're going to feel is this much. You're just going to feel this much. So, but you're going to go up and feel that much, just that tiny bit. No, but it has to touch to go around. It has to be stable to go move around something. It has to touch. Too much. You lifted with your arm. You really didn't feel going around it like this. You weren't lifting your arm to do this. You just did that. That's hard to do when the stick is just in the air. Like what, no, once it touches, it'll feel like you're just going around the stick, like you just did. It, too much. So just go back down and move around the stick for a sec. Nope. I don't know what you're doing. Now you're now you're doing this. This has nothing. This what does this have to do with? Put the stick back down. Put the stick back down. Stick down. If you have to hold it, hold it. And just move that much around the stick. Okay. Too much. This much. Take your other fingers off. They're spoiling it. You don't have this little. There. That much. That's what it's going to feel like. Do come back. Do it again. That much. Come back. Keep your fourth and fifth off. It won't work without with them crunching things up. Go on up around the little three finger fulcrum. Come down. Feel the little fulcrum. Feel this little fulcrum. Feel it. OK, now you're just going to hold the stick above the surface. And you're just going to touch and feel that little fulcrum. There, you did it. It's what it is. I seem like nothing, but you just released. Now continue coming up. Come on, up, up, up. You released. Come on, cock your wrist as soon as the uh, come down. <laughs> yeah, how easy all that was, really? There was, I didn't sense any type. No, too big. You lost it. You just got to do this. I told you it's that much. It feels like this. You got to get your fourth and fifth off or it won't work. No, don't do that. No, just you were fine. Just. Your grip looks pretty good right now. Now just go up that tiny bit. 
as you touch, you'll just, but you need to feel the surface. You need to see it because it's stable. The stick feels stable. It's easy to move around, right? So as soon as it touches, it's like you can, that's when you can really feel moving around it. Like that. See, a tiny moved around it, didn't it? There's some movement here, wasn't there? Now follow that up and come on, get up to the surface. Now do it again, and this time, allow the thing to really come up above your head. Beautiful. Ah, come on down. The grip looks pretty good, doesn't it? You're getting it. See if you can do that little thing around the three-finger fulcrum. We're not getting a rebound, so it's fulcrum potential. There you go. Follow it up and get up to here. Come on. Yeah, man. Boom. Boom, 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 up, down, up, down, up. Nope. It's, I'm telling, I know, I know you've had it a couple times and it's so tiny and subtle. You're not quite feeling the release all the time. It just, it just does this, watch. It does this to that. So try this. Put the stick on the surface. Are these fingers clamped down on the stick, or could you take them off if I asked you to? There you go, like that. Now I feel like they're cool. Now just keeping this here, just move around the stick, around the fulcrum, potential. I'll watch your butt end come up. That's what we're doing now. Just Give me that little rotation around a fixed point in the universe, which is now somewhere back in the three finger area. Not the tip, because we haven't gone up. <laughs> right? Okay, come back down. Did you release? Come back down. No, 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 no. Watch, stay flat. Come on. Now come back down. Come on. There's your squeeze. There's your release. Come back down. Come back down. Up. Release, take squeeze. Come back, come back. That's your squeeze, but you didn't do anything. Release, no, don't jump ahead of me. I just got you feeling something. Feel it, release. But it can't go up. We're not doing that right now. Little release, move around the stick, but come back, turn your wrist back and a little squeeze. Okay. Release, squeeze. Gotta come down now. Gotta come back to where you were. Come on, it comes back. A little concave here, and then it goes up and it comes down. The butt, the palm touches the butt end, right? Like that. A little release. Three finger grip. You gotta move around that to release. Yeah, come back down, squeeze. Release. Squeeze. Okay, now this time you're gonna release. Watch. You're gonna release and follow it up. Put the stick back down. Put the stick back down. Just put it back down. Give me that little release and do what you just did. Not the butt end. Butt end's not going to go up to release right now. You have to go around it. Come on now, follow it up. Follow it up. Follow it up. Ah, it happens. Oh, it's one smooth. You got to do it. Release. Follow it up. Okay. There it is. Follow it up. Follow it up. Come on. It's one, almost. It's smoother. Follow it up. Take it up with you. The release will fall. Gotta follow that up. Why are you waiting? It's not one motion if you wait. No, and you don't get up here like this. Just you had it. You have and you have it right now. Put it stick down. I'm getting all excited. You put the stick down. Release and follow it up. Why did your release look like this? The release is this tiny, tiny, tiny flat thing. But put the stick flat on the surface. This is a remedial thing. This is going to give it to you. It has to be flat. But it can't be up here somehow. Okay, and then you're just going to move that much and follow it up. But you can't stop. Put it flat. It's one. No, what are you doing? Put the stick flat. Move that tiny bit and then follow it up all in one smooth motion. Go on, keep going. Yeah. Put it back down. This is remedial. Little bend and follow it up. Boom! 
there it is. It just goes whack. Oh, oh, no, you don't go like this and wait. There's not one smooth motion. All you have to do is what I showed you. Put the stick down. No. No. You're doing this. You'll get it by do, going this much around this little fixed point. This little three finger grip. Do it. Little bend. There it is. Follow it up. You don't stop. Go back down. Go back down. You have to follow that up. That broke the wrist, didn't it? Break the wrist. Break the wrist. Now follow it up. You don't wait. Don't wait. Stop. Set up. Take your time. If you don't get set up, it just ends up doing this. And you think you're doing it, you're not. Too much. You're not moving around a fixed point. You have this. Just keep doing what I'm telling you, and you got it. Put the stick on the surface flat. Move around it, and as soon as you've moved it around it that much, go on up, you move way too much. No, you're not starting with it flat. You just won't follow what I'm telling you to do. <laughs> it's like, come on. Oh, now put the stick down. Take a deep breath. No, put the stick down. Just for fun, release and squeeze. I'm calling it that. No, I've known I made that. There you go. You're going to feel that to begin with. Come on back, squeeze. Come on, come back down. Okay, there. Yeah, you're down. Now you squeeze. And we're closed. All right. There, yeah, you're on, open. Now come on, bring it back down. If that's where it'll be when you land, you won't even know. So all you need to do is get that first part of it and follow it up, all in one smooth motion. Follow it up. Right? Don't make it. It's just nice and smooth. Nice. No, it's nice and smooth. No, you twist it. No, I think you've got to put the stick on the surface. Because you didn't twist when you did it on the surface. No. Put the stick on the surface. You're not flat. The stick looks like it's at an angle. That's why sometimes I have it, because it looks like this. It doesn't look like this. Okay, well, hold it here if you want. Ah, now, just come back here. Get it flat. Now, when you go up, does it twist? Release, go on up. Stop too much, but you, did you twist? No. Now, come back down. It didn't twist, did it? Did it twist? Come on. Didn't twist. It just created a little lump. Didn't twist. Come back down. That lump flattens up. This time you're going to go like this. Now watch. It doesn't twist. It just follow it up. But why would it twist? Once you get once you get to here, all I do is just follow it up. It it like brings it up. The speed that you release brings there brings it up. Stop. Come back down. You you, you lose. You start again. Not putting it flat. So you're never going to get it. You had it. Keep it flat. Now the speed that you release is what you're, the speed you're going to follow it up at. Follow that speed up. Too late. You stopped it. No, nope, it went way up. It's a little tiny thing. Follow that up. No, nope, no, nope, got to decide. But you got to decide. You got to you got to make the move and follow it. Up. Make your move and follow it up. Come on, follow that up. Can't stop. Follow it up. You can't. Follow it up. You got. No, nope, put it down. Yeah, follow it up, but you can't stop. So you, you got that? You got that. But can't you just go up a little and then follow it up? Follow it up like that. Put it down. As soon as you don't put it down, you go back to your old habit. You got to put it down and feel what it feels like to go a little bit, and then you follow it up flat like that. You got it, you know. Not follow. Too late. You have to start again. You lost your opportunity. There it is. It. You should just practice that. We've been going for a while on this, right? Yeah. Okay, but right. It's so subtle. It took me years of giving you this in the beginning. I'm giving you this pretty early, really. You well, get it? Go ahead. When you're playing, when you're in an actual playing situation, you're not going to leave the stick on the snare drum battery. Like that. No, you're not. But what? You, but this is giving you the. This is giving you the secret. Yeah, I know. I, I found a clever. Go ahead. But the thing is, the only way that the hand can turn a bit forward is if the stick is resting on the on the pad, because if it uh, or, or on the snare drum or any playing surface for that matter. But I but, already, but Joe, I already told you that. You forgot what I told you. Stay with me. 
stay with me because I know this is like your mind is swimming. Yeah. First of all, what you felt is a big success. Okay. Two. It's a little early for you to feel it yet. I tried, but you weren't quite ready. So I gave it to you this way. You leave it flat, you do this, and you follow it up. Now, as I told you, if you when you watch the video, you'll see that I say that then when I had you do it, so you could feel that little tiny thing, I had you keep the stick half an inch parallel bead to butt end at what we call the floor. And I told you, that you're going to feel that feeling where the stick is stable when the bead touches the surface. Hey, look! He said, I can only do it if it's like, well, it, isn't it stable? Hey, look, it's stable! You're turning parallel. Just, okay, yeah, so you're twisting again. So, okay, I'll give you one last thing. All right, that's reach out. Yeah. Just, I'll give you another remedial thing. Come on, follow me because we're done here. I, I didn't get to other stuff, but that's cool. Okay, remember that grip. If you clutch with the back fingers, you're never going to get this. There it is. Now you're in a position where you can feel that. Okay, so you're, you're half an inch parallel bead to butt end, right? Beautiful grips, correct? You have a little three finger thing that's jiggy. Now you're just going to, we're doing a slow motion. Just touch the surface. Touch it? No! Just put it down on the surface. There. Now, now I want you to just roll. That little bit. Too much! Follow it up. Once you do that, you fall. You got it. It's that. You have to feel. Hey, here you go. Follow it up. Come on. I fooled you into it. I tricked you into it. Okay, you're getting it. Okay, we're going to continue this journey next time. I practice that over and over, and I do the piano thing over and over. Right? You've got to come up. Remember? I'll send you what Dick said. There has to be a release, and there has to be, as the forearm starts down, the tip of the stick reaches its maximum. You got to get up to come down. Okay, it's really good. All right, so we, we jumped ahead a little bit, but you know, as I was saying, Dick Wilson didn't always follow yeah. chronological protocol. Okay, very good. Turning off the camera.